Hey there, and welcome to the Inspire Life Podcast. This is Michael, your host, and today I'm really pumped to bring you an interview that I did with Laura Polisic of Taxi Free in Stillwater, Minnesota. So I'm not going to go too in-depth in this intro. Uh, we t- cover a lot of different topics, especially when it comes to nutrition, toxins in our environment, toxins in our food, and how to really be more mindful of those things and live a more toxic free lifestyle. So Laura's info will be in the notes. You can check it out on Instagram as well as the actual store, which is in Stillwater. Um, one other thing that I wanted to let everyone know is that we have our second inspire immersion coming up in november 2022 so if you are interested please reach out to me i can send you more info you can also follow inspire life Cairo center on instagram or on facebook we'll be posting there but we do have a few seats left so if you're hearing this in june or july of 2022 and you're interested in checking out the inspire immersion we would love to have you so without further ado i will let laura take it away Welcome to the Inspire Life podcast. My name is Michael. I am your producer and host. And today I am really excited to have Laura Polisic, and she is the founder and owner of Toxie Free in Stillwater. And Toxie Free, I won't go too in depth about it, but she really helps people clean out their homes and live more toxin free and to live more naturally. So, Laura, thanks for being here on the show today. If you want to go ahead too, just share. Maybe a bit about your origin story, how you started Toxie Free, what got you into the space, and yeah, we'll start with that. And also, you know, where you're from too, if you want to share that. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for having me. I just appreciate your podcast so much, how, you know, making the choice and how optimal health is a birthright. And that is what I found in my own personal journey with this. That's how all of this started. I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease in junior high, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and just given a pill said, and with the instructions, take this for the rest of your life. And that was it. And then my mom, who's a biologist, explained the function of a thyroid and how it affects metabolism. And speaking to a junior high girl that was very terrified about my weight. And so I really struggled my whole life. I didn't know anything about what to eat or why I was always hungry. I just knew that I gained weight really easily. And I just thought it was my own fault. And finally, gosh, I think it's 13 or more years ago now, I just was like, we are biologically human, there must be a biological answer, like it shouldn't be this hard to find information about what we need to eat, we all are born having to have to eat. And so I just found out that I would always feel hungry until my body got the nutrients it needed. And then I found out how difficult it is to find nutrient dense food. And really, that's what changed my life. And so ever since then, I've been trying to protect those rare and precious nutrients by everything in my life living as naturally as I can. So how I cook those, what I cook it in, what I store the food in. And then it as I learned more, I Um, I learned that what I put on my skin goes into my bloodstream 60 to 70 percent just as just like what I would be eating so that opened a whole new thing so it just (laughs) you know went like that and the big thing all along I I was like how are busy families going to be finding this information and finding the products sometimes that would take me months months, like nine, 10, 11 months of searching and being discouraged. How are they going to find these? So I always knew I wanted to make the information available to others and then the products as well. So that's the story behind Toxie Free. That's amazing. And I thank you for for sharing your personal story. Um, Yes. the thyroid function, I mean, in the United States, especially there's, there are a lot of people who have Hashimoto's who are diagnosed and it, who knows if you can pinpoint like specific one specific thing or whatever it might be that really is, is contributing to that. But we do know for sure 
that the amount of toxins in our food, the amount of toxins in the just in our environment in general, definitely is contributing to that. And I, I thank you for you know sharing that side of things and recognizing too that the nutrients, obviously, it's super important to to eat healthy. But if we also aren't in the space where our body can actually like break down and get those nutrients the way it's supposed to, because it has to deal with other junk that's in the food. Um, that can make it challenging as well. So, and this information, like what you just shared, it's not readily available. There's, there's not a ton. I mean, you have to really go digging for it to find this information. It's obviously not what's being uh, broadcast to, to the masses. So um, I thank you for obviously a, for bringing good products into our lives and helping people understand that they can uh, kind of detox those toxins, but then B uh, on the other side, doing the education piece. Cause um, you know, it's, it's great to, to minimize the toxins and to get things that we know are going to be better for us, but also knowing the why. And also that helps us too. Maybe if we aren't necessarily at home and we have to be more adaptable, helps us understand what to look for and why. So I, I do want to ask, because I'm, I'm curious myself, you know, selfishly, um, what are some of the things that a lot of people, toxins that we have in our homes that we're not even aware of, whether that's within our cookware, uh, if it's in the actual food we're eating, anywhere else, we, it might be fine. Like, I, I just, I'm not even really sure. So I'm curious, you know, what you can share about toxins that are in the home and things that we might not even consider or think about, if that question makes sense. <laughs> yes, absolutely. There's there's so many. I think really being aware that food products are designed to ignite our bliss point. And mm -hmm. that is, so we're anticipating the dopamine that will come even before we I mean, it can even be without seeing it, you know, but just knowing about that food experience and what it's going to deliver. So really, um, for me, shifting what food's purpose was completely changed my life. And then, like I said, protecting those nutrients. So, I mean, I just started really becoming aware and questioning everything, everything that I touched things can shed. So, you know, plastic, like, for instance, just a, a toilet brush that you clean your toilet with is, it is almost impossible to find one that's not plastic. And those bristles, you know, the plastic bristles, they can, um, they shed every time you touch it or use it. And so then those are ending up back on our plates, you know, because we're all in the ecosystem system and just having that in our home, it sheds microplastics that fall to the floor and our babies and pets are more susceptible because they're the ones on the floor. And it just is in our air and our indoor air becomes so much more polluted than our outdoor air. There's like things like um, dental floss, almost all dental floss is made of nylon and then some very like mass produced brand of floss. I don't even know which brand it is, but um, a pract common practice then is putting a Teflon on the nylon so it glides easier between your teeth. So I didn't even learn that until recently. I just knew that I didn't want the plastic in my gums, um, you know, because the floss can hit your gums and cut in there. So I didn't yeah. want to be have, coming in such close contact with that. But, um, you know, sheets can have, uh, especially wrinkle-free sheets can have formaldehyde, which actually causes insomnia and sleep is such an important part of my diet because, you know, without really restorative proper sleep, none of the rest of my body is going to function properly. And it's always going to register that I'm hungry. So it's like, I'm setting myself up for failure before I even get out of bed. So those are some things that stand out. Um, definitely. I think everyone has heard about the toxins, you know, in cookware. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I hate to bring bad news, but recently I just, I always thought stainless steel would be a good choice. And 
uh, I just recently found out that they're finding that it's leaching nickel, especially <laughs> for long. I know for like long term cooking, like a bone broth or any sort of acidic, like a tomato sauce. And I was like, what? Like, this is so impossible to navigate. Um, luckily, for over 10 years, I've used the most natural cookware I can find, which is clay. And it's unglazed. Um, there's no color added. It's just the clay. They've been making it for 700 years that way. And that's something we sell at Toxie Free, you know, to help others because um, that was hard to find as well. So, gosh, yeah. what else? What about like like cast iron? What what's uh, what's going on there? I'm just curious because I've heard that that's a better alternative, obviously, than like yes. Teflon. Um, yes. I'm just curious. Yeah. Yeah. I. Um, I always thought that would be for me right in the beginning of this journey. And I was reading somewhere that they have to coat the pan during transportation to you so that it won't rust. And so I started calling the companies and none of them could tell me what they coated it with. <laughs> For real. <laughs> and, yeah. And so I just was like, you know, I, I'm going to keep looking and I'm really glad I did because I was able to find the clay, which actually uh brings it's it's just brought me so much happiness in cooking with clay but i did find um a few years into the journey a company in france that a, they're a family company that's been in business since like 1820 or 1830 and part of their mission statement is to provide health benefits to their customers. So health is very important to them. And they make a carbon steel pan, which we uh, sell at Toxie Free because I've been using that for several years now in my own home. And it becomes nonstick the more you use it. And nice. carbon steel is 99 parts iron with one part carbon steel yeah something like that okay. <laughs> so um but it's it doesn't have that heavy like cast iron kind of surface it seems more smooth okay and yeah gotcha that's helped <clears throat> me a lot excuse me well it's good to know i <laughs> jess and i we need to upgrade our cookware so uh that's really interesting on the clay i'd never even never even heard of that I'm yeah, just, yeah and go ahead I'm, I'm, if, I'm curious to learn more about the clay because I don't know I think of clay and like if you're not like glazing it and firing it then I feel like it would just like crumble but maybe that's not I the case know, I know it's just amazing they they've been creating this for at least 700 years and the it's beautiful it's black um and the black color comes from the firing process and it the the cookware can go to a thousand plus degrees, but you do have to um, bring that temperature up slowly together. Oh, like, okay. yeah, you won't want to put it in a hot oven or take a hot pan and put it on a cold counter because it can crack. But it, I have made uh, my own bone broth. And now I wasn't ever able to cook. I didn't know anything about food or cooking, but <laughs> I've been able to successfully make my own bone broth uh, for over 10 years to consume every single day. And I've used the same unglazed clay soup pot on my stovetop and I cook it for 48 hours straight. Okay. And so that's all. I can't imagine anyone getting more use out of a soup pot. I mean, right. it just keeps going and going and going. And yeah, so I'm, it's probably like costing me less than a penny <laughs> for Absolutely. how much use I've gotten out of it. Well, and then it's pretty like, durable too then. Yes. And the, I would think the top chefs in the world would consider it part of the flavor of their dish, just like any you know, terrier, or I, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but um, so, you know, because you're, you're using the earth from that place and it becomes part of the flavor of what you're cooking. So it's just delicious. Um, and there's also the clay adds a moistness to 
whatever you're cooking. And what I love is that I have become the laziest gourmet because I eat like royalty every day, but I literally, (laughs) I just find the best ingredient I can with the best salt in this clay cookware. I put it in at a low temperature and I leave and I, it's just cooking there all day and it's just delicious when I get home. So that's awesome. It's uh I, I mean, there's so many different products out there and each one, it sounds like, you know, there's a lot that can have um, really toxic things. And there's also ones that can be you know, a lot better for us. And uh, just distilling that information and figuring out, um, I thank you for doing your due diligence and calling the cast iron companies. Right. Cause like, I mean, if you don't want that, you don't want your, your people that you serve to have that either. So um, yeah, yeah, I was always under the assumption that cast iron was better, but maybe clay is in my future. Uh, I did want to circle back to something that you mentioned um, about food, which is really interesting. Um, The fact that um, our bodies can react to specific foods from the way that they're made without even eating them. And I know, um, for example, like if we see fruit that we know is high in sugar and that we can like, we know it's going to be sweet, our body will actually start to create insulin before we even put that in our mouth. And I mean, that's probably a healthier reaction or, or example of that. But even when it comes to, you know, different types of foods, like process, you know, a lot of processed things that our body probably knows how ha- it's going to taste really good, but it also has stuff that in, in our body that's not so good for us. So, you know, I just wanted to circle back to that. And I'm kind of curious, you know, what do you do with toxic free and within your own life to make sure that the foods that you're eating aren't containing things that are going to change our physiology without even eating them or things that are going to be a lot better for us. So I'm just kind of curious more about your ideas around nutrition, just because that's such a big topic. Yes, I really appreciate that question. I because that for me is the foundation of all of this and all of my motivation. So when that day when I, you know, was in junior high and left the office with my pill that I had to take for the rest of my life. I wish I would have had the instructions that any sort of processed food would be the worst possible thing that I could do for my autoimmune disease. And Mm -hmm. it just would have saved um, so much uh, heartache in my life. And really, I feel like I did a lot of damage with the chemicals to just to my palate and to the things I craved. My mind definitely was be hijacked thinking about the sugary uh, sweets and different foods that I knew I shouldn't eat because I gained weight so easily, but I just couldn't stop thinking about them. And so I always felt hungry and I didn't ever feel nourished. And so that once I learned everything and I really put all of my time, energy, and money in finding the most nutrient dense food I could. So that took meeting farmers, talking to them, asking them about their soil, um, and then developing that relationship where that was where my food came from. That is what I, I really had to shift even my taste and my palate so that it it became human again. I, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Where it, I could recognize the nutrients it was craving. Right. Well, and you, you bring up a good point. I mean, with the way our food system is and with a lot of the products that I call them products, products marketed as food, because a lot of them don't even meet the definition of food. Yes. And they, they have tricked us into uh, not being able to understand when we're actually hungry, when we're actually full. Uh, they have tricked us into not even recognizing when we're thirsty, to not recognizing mm-hmm. what we actually need. Our bodies were intelligently created to know, like, if you're deficient in, I don't know, selenium, maybe you're going to go and crave Brazil nuts or eggs. Like that's a really Mm -hmm. extreme example. Right. But, Mm -hmm. um, the way that agriculture is nowadays with a lot of the products out there, uh, it's just been completely flipped upside down. 
Um, and it sounds like what you had to go through yourself and what you want to help other people do is come back to that more uh, intuitive eating. I know in, intuitive eating is kind of a buzzword, but it's really just having our own uh, intuition come back and recognizing our own hunger patterns and our own feeding habits and patterns because I mean, that's what we are as humans. We're habitual. And we, when we recognize that we're deficient in something or we need something, we're going to go try and find it. Um, and we've just kind of become lost from that. So I guess that's kind of what I heard with what yes. you shared there. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's hard if there has been damage done, which those strong chemicals are meant to mm-hmm. ignite this desire in all of us. And so then it makes it really difficult to navigate, you know, so I don't, I don't consider it food for me. And I, it's become a miracle because I never thought in my life that I would not be thinking about those foods that I so desperately wanted for the most, the majority of my life um, and tried equally as hard to avoid. Mm -hmm. But now I don't, I don't think of it. It's like a light just, I just flipped it on and I don't even think about it anymore because those are not food. Like when I had all those choices, because I thought that's what food was, they're in the grocery store and that's where you buy food and it's all around us. Mm -hmm. You know, you drive down the road and how many fast food places are there? Like, there's it's so difficult to find real food it's nowhere to be found so um yeah that that was a a miracle for me I think another thing that you you just brought up there too which is super important is no matter where you're at if you're listening on your own health and, and wellness journey and when it comes to food it takes time for any health process to come to fruition like In my personal story too, like going from being addicted to fast food and, you know, people who have heard my story with all that, it took so much time and and food is still something where I'm not a hundred percent with it. Like there's still times where, you know, I want to stop and get some, not necessarily fast food, but those quicker kind of, you know, the crunchy, tasty, salty, sweet, those types of things, it still happens. And, you know, being adaptable is, is an important part of life. But to get to the point where, you know, you, your body is back in tune, it, it just takes a lot of time. So I wanted to reiterate that fact because some people think that, you know, if they can't in a week go from eating fast food five or six times a week and having soda and all that, if they can't flip it in a week, then they can't do it. Well, that's just not true. Let's, let's start super small because that's how we, how we make progress is just by starting small and, and, and having grace with ourselves in the process. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. And it, and it's not anything personal at all. Like this is, mm-hmm. that's the, the design of it. And I think just being able to separate myself and see that, I'm just cells and I'm giving my cells information and then my cells are performing or not performing based on that information. And the same goes with the toxins that we live with, you know, anything that we bring our cells to interact with, it's going to um, affect. Yep. I love that. That's a good way to, to look at it down to the, the cellular cellular um, kind of makeup of everything. And it's, you know, it's, it's information at the end of the day. Yep. So, okay. I do really want to uh, allow you to, to talk a little bit more about toxic free itself. So um, your physical location is in uh, Stillwater. And then if you just want to share uh, beyond that, you know, where people can find you, um, I guess, in person more about, you know, the, the idea of the shop and everything, just I guess, whatever you want to share about, about Toxie Free, because it's awesome. <laughs> oh, what a privilege. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, we have a physical location in on Main Street in downtown Stillwater. And our store is called Toxie Free with a Y. So T-O-X-Y-F-R-E-E. We also have everything on our online store, which is shoptoxiefree.com. But we exist to help people have success with a healthy home and life. So that is our purpose is to, we have farmers who bring their food straight from the farm so that the nutrient dense food can be accessible. And then everything in our 
store is basically from my life of trying to protect those nutrients. So, um, and then with toxin free, it accidentally becomes plastic free. So uh, that's <laughs> such a great benefit to having um, living as naturally as possible. And beyond that, it is, um, it's just, just like if you are familiar with farmers and the incredible work they're doing to bring us nutrient dense food, mm -hmm. the same is for the products. There are artisans who are passing along and keeping, my gosh, our yoga mats have a 5,000 year old tradition of it infusing Ayurvedic herbs into the fabric. And all of our products have a story like that where it's this artisan, you know, keeping a tradition alive that's so natural and uh it enhances our lives so much so yeah well it's amazing and it's um i mean just from our conversation today and obviously knowing what you stand for um you can just feel the passion and what you do and and the the products that you have and just the stories that you tell so uh, I thank you so much for, for doing what you yes. do with Toxi Free. Yes. Uh, I'll put the information. Can people shop online too? Is that an option yes. you have? Okay, cool. Yes. We, um, the only thing that we, we don't ship our food. Okay. Uh, so then you just have to come in for that. But we also offer classes and a membership and consulting. I mean, we will do whatever it takes to help in your journey of creating a healthy home for yourself. Well, that's so, awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for all that you do. And obviously for your time on the podcast today, I do want to ask, uh, I have one more question and I ask this to all of our guests. It's probably the only structure that's really in these podcast episodes, <laughs> but just what's the one message or the one thing that you want to leave our audience with today? I think it would be about that we are all made of cells and we interact with everything we come into contact with. And we as consumers have such incredible purchasing power. So we're the ones bringing products into our homes. And if we can start thinking about what we bring in there, because our cells are going to interact with it and our health depends on it, that is life changing. So looking at each product and where does this come from in nature and just starting to think like that will be just a huge transformation in health and happiness. You're right. And, you know, it's kind of back to what you just mentioned at the start, the way that we operate and inspire life. It's, it's your, your health inspired by choice and um, choosing, you know, what it is that you want to bring into your home, what you want to eat, what you want to engage with. Uh, it's really important to be mindful in those moments because, uh, when we look at the vision and going forward, what we're doing now is going to create what we are in the future. So awesome. Laura, thank you so much. This has been such a pleasure. I've learned a lot from today's podcast. I'm going to look into the, the clay cookware because that's super fascinating to me. Um, and I'll also, I'll post all of your information in the show notes too, so that our listeners can get in touch, shop online, go visit Stillwater. Stillwater is always a good time. So um, awesome. Yeah. Thanks again so much, Laura. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. It's a privilege. I awesome. appreciate it so much. Yeah, and we appreciate you. And for all of our listeners, as always, until next time, keep inspiring. Thank you. Thanks for tuning into the Inspire Life podcast. I hope you enjoyed today's episode with Laura. Please make sure that you check her out on Instagram. Go check out her store uh, and help create an environment for yourself and your family that is more free of toxins and healthier overall. Also, if you haven't, jump on over to Facebook and join the Inspire Twin Cities community. That's where Dr. Mel, Ashley, and I share our content to help you continue to live your most inspired and thriving life. And lastly, also, if you have not yet, please on Spotify or on iTunes, leave a five-star review. This helps us get the word out to more people who are looking to change their ways when it comes to living more inspired and by choice. So uh, lastly, just a note from me, I really appreciate all the listeners. Uh, sometimes I feel like maybe I'm talking into the nothingness, but then I have people who come up to me and let me know that they were inspired by the podcast and that they hear good things. So please never hesitate to reach out to me. You can email me, michael at coachcrew.com. You can also text me, 651 seven six zero zero six eight eight uh we are excited to connect with you further so all right little long-winded outro i uh, hope you have a wonderful day and as always until next time keep inspiring thank you